Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for this weekend's UFC main event, another middleweight clash. Jack Hermanson taking on Joe Pfeiffer. Um, excited for this one, as I was for this previous weekend, which uh, which I got into in the aftermath. I'm, I'm about to do that after we record this now, so make sure you check that out. Um, a really interesting stylistic matchup this. Of course, there's a big experience difference for Jack Hermanson compared to Joe Pfeiffer. Um but I do kind of feel like it's like <laughs> it might be Joe Piper's time, if that makes sense. Like Jack Hermanson has been a very, very good fighter for a number of years through Cage Warriors into the UFC. It, there was one particular point in his career, which I'll, I'll touch on in a second, where he had a really good streak and, and everyone was like looking at him like, OK, he's, he's going to be in for a title shot very soon. But then since that point, he's, he's alternated wins and losses. Um, now, if, if the pattern continues, he is due a win in this next fight. But... He is fighting Joe Pfeiffer, and uh, this guy, due to, I mean, well, just his, just his general intensity. The, you know, the the guy is a very intense individual, very excited. You know, thank you for the effort opportunity is the thing that stands out to me from his his contender series fight. But of course, you'll remember he had that horrendous injury that uh, that put a TKO loss on his record, and he lost a, a chunk of time. And you know, there's a. I can't remember where the interview was, but I remember listening to him talk in one of the features where he's, you know, talking about the fact that he, he, he's starting to, he was starting to feel at one point like, like, you know, his dreams might not come true. He might not become the UFC fighter that he's, he's uh, you know, he's been dreaming of. Um, but then to be able to get the opportunity and then to take that opportunity and run with it like he did, I feel like th this, this momentum that he's got is, it counts for a lot in mixed martial arts. It really does. It counts for a lot, not only in the in the perspective of the fans and the opportunities and the the hype that comes with you. Like you walk into fight week and you're like the hot guy, like the, the hot guy. That sounds really weird. You're like you're hot shit. You're like you're the guy everyone's talking about. Like when you walk into the building, everyone's like, oh, there he is, there he is. That takes you to a whole new level. You know, sometimes it can have a negative effect and you can get a little bit too big for your boots. You could say, but I don't get that feeling with Joe Pfeiffer. I feel like he's he's finally recognizing and realizing that he is fully capable of doing what he achieved, what he wanted to achieve. Um, you know, and and the the distant memory of living in his coach's basement and wondering if he was ever going to be here is behind him. Um, and that counts for a lot in mixed martial arts. You know, the the more I watch MMA, the more I, it's. I mean, it is a game of inches, and and the person that can make consistent good decisions one after another, but good decisions come from confidence and confidence comes from a variety of things, but success is a big one of them. And Joe Pfeiffer is a, a winning fighter right now. Um, and, and the thing I like about his game as well is that it's not overly complex. You know, the, like he doesn't, um, he doesn't start doing wild things when he's like, you know, what my, my, my gas tanks hit half full. I'm going to start doing spinning attacks. You know what I mean? There's just none of that. It's a it's a nice, basic, stiff jab and a clean, accurate cross and beautiful hooks. I, I just love a, a simple game that's applied well. Um, we saw good kicks from him against uh, um, uh, Al Hassan when he was southpaw as well. And I do feel like kicks could be a big part of the game for um, for Joe Pfeiffer in this one, especially for Jack Manson's lead leg. Because the, the thing that, that people tend to struggle with, with Hermanson is um, how unorthodox he is. <laughs> what was it Chris Curtis said in the corner? He's goofy. Um, that's a good way of putting it. And and like there are fighters that occasionally a fighter comes around that kind of doesn't move, doesn't seem to move in a, like a normal, a normal, normal rhythm. It's, it's, it's an odd thing to quantify and to clarify for you. But if I say Keith Jardine, a lot of lot of fi uh, fans that have been watching this sport for a while are going to go, "Yep, I know exactly what that what that is." Um, Herky jerky, that's another good way of putting it. That Dom Cruz, for some reason, hates you saying on commentary. He always fights against the herky jerky. I don't know what what is that. Um, it's a difficult thing to quantify, but what you see with Jack Hermanson is this unusual kind of bounding and bouncing, and his feet don't always do the same thing. There aren't these consistent patterns to the way that he moves, and 
a lot of his movement is down to how he feels about the fight, his confidence in the fight. Can he move into range and sting the person? If he rushes into range and clinches up, you know, how does his Greco fare against the person that he's up against? A lot of the, these different things w will be determined when we first see Jack Hermanson step onto the, the canvas in, in that first round and uh, see how he moves and, and what Joe Pfeiffer has got to deal with. Ultimately, Pfeiffer has got to try and take away some of that, that unorthodox movement because otherwise he'll just stand and find himself waiting like Chris Curtis did. And, you know, you saw the frustration from Chris Curtis that he wasn't getting the fight that he wanted, but then Jack Hermanson just played a very, very clever game. And, and I, I expect him to try and do the same thing with Joe Pfeiffer. Um, okay, let's quick tell of the tape and then I'll pick up where I was. So uh, Jack Hermanson, clear experience advantage, 23 wins and eight losses on his record, uh, 12 and two for Joe Pfeiffer. Um, for Jack Hermanson, 11 wins by knockout, six wins by submission. Um, Rinnicky chokes, um, guillotines, uh, sorry, rear naked chokes, guillotines, arm bars, and a heel hook against Kelvin Gastelum. Um, the thing that we remember from Jack Hermanson is is the Joker scene. You know, the thing that he um, he he kind of labelled himself, um, and it was it's a beautiful submission. You know, we saw him land it against uh, uh, David Branch and uh, Gerald Mershart, and he was very very close to getting Jacare with it in the first round of their fight as well. So he was on this little bit of a run, and it's a it's an unusual guillotine. The reason why it's different is because the arm of the opponent is across the body trapped. So they're kind of they're kind of offset to their opponent. Like a normal guillotine, the person can be quite, you know, on top of you. Whereas the joker team, you're off to one side and you've got your leg thrown over to kind of anchor the far side hip. And he was he was very, very good at finding this position and cinching it up. And the other thing as well about Jack Hermanson, when you go back to that streak, so the streak was um uh, Talis Latis, Gerald Mershart, David Branch, and uh, uh, Jacare. Um, the David uh, the David Branch fight was beautiful because you saw that beautiful spinning takedown where he re-established the foot sweep a couple of times, eventually got the fight to the floor and was able to clamp onto that joker team um, as David Branch was trying to trying to scramble back to his feet against the fence. The Gerald Mershart fight was was a, an absolute hammering from ground and pound. And, and this is really where Jack Hermanson, I feel, is, is overlooked in his MMA career. If you find yourself in the bottom position against Jack Hermanson, his ground and pound is very, very dangerous and it's very calculated as well. He's very good at looking and seeing where the targets are. Same as Gunnar Nelson, another fighter that's very calculated. They're, just not, they're not just wailing on their opponent and looking at the referee like, have I done enough yet? Stop the fight. You know, stop the fight. I'm that guy. Um, so... Jack Hermanson, if he finds himself in this fight on the floor, if he's on bottom position, he's got his heel hooks to attack. If he's in top position, it's, it's got to be ground and pound. It's going to be very difficult for him to get into the top position, though. And, and of course, I feel like this is going to be more of a striking fight. And if someone does engage a takedown, it's most likely going to be Joe Pfeiffer. I feel like Pfeiffer is going to feel like he can smash through Jack Hermanson's uh, ground game, the unorthodox nature of it, the the, the potential to get his neck tangled, like the effortless way that Joe Pfeiffer just picks people up and just, just slams them to the floor. Um, it's quite clear that anybody trying to break his posture, trying to control a limb or anything, is going to have a, 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 a tremendous amount of energy wasted trying to do that. So I think Jack Hermanson is going to play with this unorthodox movement from the outside, keep bounding in and try and sting and, and pick at him best he can. Um, if the range does close down, Joe Pfeiffer has got beautiful power doubles. We've also seen him just lift people up from a body lock and slam them. For Jack Hermanson, it's far more about creating momentum with twists and spins. He, <coughs> he loves uh, reaps and trips and those kind of takedowns. But more of an entanglement with, with Jack Hermanson with, with, with takedowns, whereas Joe Pfeiffer is more about driving through or lifting up and slamming. Um, going back to their records, so... Uh, we went through Jack Hermanson, so 11 knockouts, 6 submissions, 2 rear naked chokes, 2 guillotines, armbar heel hook. Joe Pfeiffer, 12 wins on his record, 8 by knockout, and uh, 3 by submission, 2 rear naked chokes, and an arm triangle. Um, <clears throat> the reason why the arm triangle is uh, an interesting one to focus on is because um, if you go back into Jack Hermanson's career... You go to his second UFC fight back in 2016. Um, 
it was it was a really really good fight to watch worth a watch he was fighting um Cesar Fajeda and the arm triangle that he got caught in he was fighting and fighting as best he could but the power and physicality of Fajeda was just enough just to just to slowly squeeze the life out of him and eventually got the submission um I would imagine if Joe Pyford is able to take this fight to the floor, he's going to be focused on controlling from top position and ground and pounding and looking to try and get past to start working on that arm triangle. Um, the arm triangle and the rear naked choke both fit together very nicely when it comes to um, when it comes to submissions. Chaining one to the next can work very well. You can go from being on someone's back in a rear naked choke to circling around and being in an arm triangle position. Or you can be in an arm triangle position, the person's bridging out, and then you sit through and take their back when it's exposed. So those two pieces fitting together are going to be really useful for Joe Pfeiffer. And of course, the more damage that he can do to uh, Jack Hermanson, the better, the easier it's going to be to get those kind of things. Because with the experience that Jack Hermanson's got, you've got to imagine the amount of um, different problems that he's found himself in over the years, different uh, situations, not only in the training room, but also in actual fights where he's had to get himself out of some pretty tough situations. I mean, you know, you look at the guys that he's fought, he's, 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 he's gone through some really, really uh, tough individuals. Of course, you know, the likes of Cannoneer, Kelvin Gastelum, uh, Vittori, Strickland, you know what I mean? He's, he's, uh, he's been, ed you know, educating himself at the top of the sport for a while. But I also do feel sometimes like experience is a huge advantage coming in. But I also feel like momentum and, uh, I mean, timing more than anything. I feel like it just kind of feels like like this is Joe, Joe, uh, Joe Piver's opportunity to really show people. And he might just not quite be ready. But part of me feels like he's uh, he's going to have a that calm, patient take the space away from Jack Hermanson, potentially do some damage to his lead leg, and then start looking at putting that jab on his face as, as often as possible. If Jack Hermanson can keep breaking his rhythm and changing his direction and his movement, he might be able to keep Joe Pfeiffer at range so he can, you know, build up a kicking game, um, which is, you know, Jack Hermanson can do a lot of damage and, you know, catch people with very unorthodox stuff. You know, this is, this is the range where he's most likely going to do his best work. If it closes down, then he's got to look at trying to tangle necks up of Joe Pfeiffer. Um, let me quick go back to the tail of the tape because I didn't finish that, did I? So um, a one-inch height advantage to Joe Pfeiffer and a two-inch reach advantage to Jack Hermanson. Um, of course, uh, average fight time for Jack Hermanson is going to be longer. It's, it's more than double the amount of... Uh, uh, the average fight time of Joe Pfeiffer, but I mean that that is basically because of the amount of fights that that uh, Jack Hermanson's had. It is also worth noting that this will be Joe Pfeiffer's. I think it's the second five round fight that he's been scheduled for, but the only other one was earlier in his career. I think he was like five and zero or something like that, and he stopped the guy in just over a minute. So. You know, or they may have trained for a five round fight, doing a five round fight against someone that you know can fight five rounds. That's going to be a new test for Joe Pfeiffer. And, and I, you know, I don't have any reason to question his, his conditioning, especially because of how calculated he is with his output. Um, but of course, the, the, the exhaustive nature of Jack Hermanson's movement can be, can be uh, tiring enough. Um, so at some point, Joe Pfeiffer is going to have to start to try and take control of this fight. But, the extra two rounds on the end might give him a little bit of time to let Jack Hermanson kind of work out his his initial energy burst. Oh, Jamie can't get the, can't get the staff these days, people. Honestly, you know what I mean. There's literally two of us in the room. One of us got their phone on. You know, I don't know, Jamie, Jamie. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's you know, this is a good opportunity for Joe Pfeiffer to really prove himself against against someone that is well recognized and well respected in the MMA community. Um, the the skills that Joe Pfeiffer has got, he's only going to continue adding to them. And there's a great feature actually um, on UFC Connected. Megan Olivi uh, uh, opens the show and then throws this feature on the gym, and it's it's, it's a cool setup. Sean Brady on the mat and a few of the guys that you'll recognize. Seems like they've got a really good a good vibe going right now and you tend to find this kind of moves from one gym to another at one point it was aka and they had all the good guys and they you know it was dc and rockhold and kane and 
cost check and swick and fitch and it's like you've got this thing going on all these guys and then for whatever reason it kind of it kind of migrates to another gym and then all of a sudden it's alpha male and these you know garbrandt and dillashaw and etc etc it's it's unusual but this is a gym to watch out for because i definitely feel like that high vibration mma success is moving in this team's direction they're doing the right things um what else <clears throat> so uh, average strikes jack Hermanson again he's going to be slightly higher he's had more fights he's had opponents in positions where he can really wail on them as well so he's he's added to his uh, striking statistics there um accuracy and defense much of a muchness there um of course the takedown accuracy and defense is going to be is going to be interesting for this one I just don't feel like we've seen enough of Joe Pfeiffer's wrestling and grappling game to really fully appreciate how he's going to match up with Jack Hermanson. But I do feel like this is the opportunity that he needs to prove how strong he is in, in the wrestling and grappling ranges. Um, but same again. I mean, you know, he, although he does like the occasional lift and slam, it's, it's quite an efficient game that he's got. You know, he, he tends to just kind of work people over with good calculated punishing shots. Um, and we know he's got power as well to back it up. Um, I normally like to do my knockdown ratio. So like, but Jack Hermanson's had uh, 1,178 total strikes and he's not credited with a knockdown. Um, he has got great ground and pound and that's really where he does his most damage with his strikes. But Joe Pfeiffer's had uh, 208 counted total strikes in the UFC and got two knockdowns. So, you know, about every hundred strikes that Joe Pfeiffer lands he's putting he's putting his opponents away and he averages between sort of 25 and 45 punches a fight as well he's not he doesn't really tend to have a, a massively high output it's very very calculated which is why i feel like over five rounds it, it's it, it's gonna it's gonna suit him i, I feel like we're gonna see uh you know see a, see a, a new level to to joe pifer i'm excited for this one i mean i, I Maybe it feels like I've been talking a lot about Joe Pfeiffer and not so much about Jack Hermanson. But over the years, like we've covered Jack Hermanson a lot. I've talked about him a lot. You know, we, we can go back to the 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 Joker teens and the you know the beautiful ground and pound that he's got. But he's alternating wins and losses right now. This is about consistency, and Joe Pfeiffer is a is a very consistent fighter, very difficult to overcome. It's going to be difficult for Jack Hermanson to go in there and impose his game on someone like Joe Fy Joe Pfeiffer, especially with the confidence that Joe Pfeiffer's got coming in. Um, four and one as an amateur, all his wins were finishers. Um, oh, and that was the one other thing as well. I forgot to get his opponent's name. Hang on, it'll be on here. Um, no, it's not. I need to go further back in his career. It was it was his it, the fight that he won on the Contender series. Go back and watch this fight. It was a beautiful little setup. He'd, be, he'd worked a couple of left hooks to the, to the body of his opponent and, and you could see one of them had landed fairly fairly well. And sometimes it's like when you when you hit somebody with a good low kick, what, what they're going to do, they're going to try and low kick you back. It's like this one-upmanship that people get, kind of get caught in. And anyway, Joe Pfeiffer had landed this beautiful left hook and his opponent came back to throw the same left hook. And you see him just drop his elbow and throw a short counter hook at the same time. Catches his opponent clean on the chin. It was a beautiful punch. Again, Simple basics applied very well, um, and if that punching stat is true that Jamie mentioned earlier, the, uh, the 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 punch machine, I'd like to see, I'd like to see how hard he can punch. But he looks like he's a thunderous individual. Um, it's going to be volume. It's going to be unorthodox movement for for Jack Hermanson, and potentially trying to snag a neck in a in a scramble or something like that but if he gets in top position from a knockdown from a from a you know a, a trip spinning scrambling takedown and he finds himself on top position ferocious ground and pound to guillotines for, for jack hermanson for joe pie for i feel like it's just going to be steady basics and I'm, I'm interested to see how he deals with the five rounds but um i think given the way that he fights i think as i've said i think it bodes well for him all right Enjoy these fights. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.